There is no other team in the world like T1. This could be a 20 minute game for SK Telecom. They will be the season three world champions. To wear a T1 uniform is to feel the weight of an unmatched legacy. Coup Tigers are falling. SKT will be your first ever two-time world champions. But despite that success, it hasn't always been easy to cheer for T1. This is it! The greatest team in the history of League of Legends! Taken down by the greatest team Europe has ever produced! And so the greatest dynasty in League of Legends did something else that no esports team had done. They managed an astonishing rebuild with the greatest player ever as their foundation. We'll be able to pick it up and that is going to be the end of this. T1, are your spring 2022 victor? With the greatest dynasty ever behind them, it's up to Faker and T1 to forge an even brighter future. This is the story of T1 League of Legends. SK Telecom didn't begin with League of Legends. Their StarCraft Brood War roster included icons like Boxer and I Love Oove, and the team forged a rivalry with KT that spanned over a decade. But League of Legends was a new battlefield for SKT, and they came out swinging. In late 2012 and early 2013, they signed their first two lineups in the title, the two rosters that eventually became known as SK Telecom T1S and K. SKT1S was ostensibly the organization's main roster, a five stack previously known as Eat Sleep Game, led by former Azubu Frost captain Reaper. SKT1K was the development roster, featuring three notable rookies in Bengi, Piglet, and Faker. But surprisingly, SKT's main roster struggled throughout the year, while their rookie team flourished. He knows it's over! Champion Summer is over! SK Telecom! Coming back after being two down! And the only thing more surprising than T1K's ascent over their sister team was their utter dominance on the world stage. Now Kane gonna be the target. Exhaust goes down, but it won't make a difference. Especially he's gonna try and chase down Faker here. But with impact to get that taunt down, will he have oh, the finisher? No. Faker is still alive! Charm's gonna land on him! Oh, is he what? gonna be able to walk away? Faker is still running! Oh. Faker still alive, now not in trouble. He's got the shockwave still alive, and there is the shockwave coming down, but Faker so very low. Expansion dies, Faker still alive. Oh! Oh, it comes in, Kane trying to get the kill. Kane does get the kill. This does not look good for Royal. This doesn't exist. Crescendo catches all of them. It's a double for impact. They get on the fountain. SK Telecom are just rolling through. The Nexus turret are potentially going to go down. This could be a 20 minute game for SK Telecom. They will be the season three world champions here at the Staples Center. Faker and his team managed to win Worlds the very same year they were formed, and in doing so, solidify the beginning of Korean international dominance. Then, in Champions Winter, SKT1K rolled through the rest of Korea without dropping a single game. Mod helping out a little bit there as well, but that is it. They're turning under the Nexus, and SK Telecom has done the impossible. There is a perfect season for SK Telecom T1K. But unfortunately, after a rough 2014, both teams failed to qualify for Worlds that year. There's the first Nexus turret, there's the second, and there goes the Nexus! Logic Shield is going to Worlds! In the aftermath of the loss, Riot abolished sister team, so the rosters combined into a unified SK Telecom T1. Marin, Bengi, Faker, Easy Hoon, Bang, and Wolf had all played for the organization before the teams were combined. The addition of Peekaboo and Tom brought them to seven players on the roster for spring 2015. This era started with some quirks, specifically with two of the region's best mid laners on the same roster, Faker and Easy Hoon, having to share time. Wait, what's this? What's this I spy in the SKT booth? It's not Faker. 
It's easy, Hoon! And after a dominant win in spring where Faker didn't play in the grand final, the team fell to EDG at MSI after Faker's previously undefeated LeBlanc was targeted by their Chinese opponents. For the first time that I can remember, in a major international event of this caliber, All-Stars Season 3 World Championship, All-Stars of the Year then, the 2014 World Championship, SK Telecom taken down here by Edwin Gaming in a thrilling series of events. But even so, this was the golden era of SKT, and one of the things that truly characterized this roster was its extreme depth. Fast forward to now, and it's less about those flashy plays and more about dominance on the map, dominance in the macro game. They still have that same level of individual skill, but the strategy has gotten much, much better through experience with a lot of these players. In 2015 and 2016, SKT were the greatest League of Legends team in the world, hailing from the game's most competitive region. Two Tigers are falling. SKT will be your first ever two-time world champions. SK Telecom have overcome every challenge. They are the undisputed best team in the world. The SKT reign continues. They win their third world championship. Three world championships in four years, two back to back. Breakout stars that seem poised to continue a truly unprecedented era of dominance. I actually think that 2016 is super interesting because the Mar and Faker show was just basically them just being way better at the game. You know, this was also the height of Bengi being extraordinarily powerful at that point in time as well. I think that he'd really come into his own in 2015. But everything eventually ends, and when it ended for SKT, it hurt. The upset is complete as the kills come through. The SKT dynasty is over. All hail the new kings, Samsung Galaxy, your 2017 world champions. Worlds 2017 saw the SKT dynasty come to a crashing halt. For a team that came second at Worlds, that might seem like dramatic framing, but things were about to get a lot worse. Peanut and Hooney left along with their head coach C. Carter, and they added some promising young players. But a disappointing 1-5 start in spring for a historical low of ninth place turned heads immediately. All the members of SKT have to go running to the hills. Faker goes gold with the, with the Zanya's hourglass, trying to keep himself alive and in the fight. But he's just too damn low. He'll get spat out, goes back to the fountain. And MVP, they have done it! Not only do they break the losing streak, they go to Game 3 versus SK Telecom T1 and they defeat them in a match for the first time since they have joined the LCK. I was not willing to write off SK Telecom for this series in particular because it seemed irresponsible. They are still SKT, they still do have the best player to ever play the game, and yet MVP won. After swapping Blossom in as their jungler, they managed to qualify for playoffs, where an old rival was waiting for them in quarterfinals. KT Rolster, they've done it! It's the 3-1 victory in the Telecom War of the playoffs, and they're heading to round two! KT Rolster eliminate SK Telecom T1 at their lowest position in the history of the LCK. Unfortunately, Summer showed exactly where SKT ranked in the LCK, nowhere near the heights of 2015 and 2016. After an 8-10 Summer split and a near miss in regional qualifiers, SKT miss Worlds for the first time since 2014. The question finally has an answer. Can SKT still make Worlds? Sadly, for you fans out there of SKT, the answer is no, that era is over, and the Korea curse when it comes to SKT making it to a, a domestic world championship does extend. Worse still, as China took home the Summoner's Cup on Korea's home turf, no LCK team made it past quarters. There were good Korean teams that were not named SK Telecom T1, but they failed against both China and, disastrously, North America at Worlds. If the region was to bounce back in 2019, surely Faker would need to be part of that resurgence. So SKT shelled out for talent in 2019, bringing together a roster that, on paper, was absolutely a super team. Two rising prodigies in Khan and Clear joined Journeyman AD Carry Teddy, and critically, the organization signed Mata, arguably the greatest support in the region's history. What they did 
with SKT, which I think that no one really could have expected because I saw that roster uh, on paper when we were, you know, even in Kesper Cup before that, right? And I was like, holy crap, can you ever beat, like, this team? Um, but what we failed to really realize was that a team is more than just the sum of its parts, right? And if you put way too many chefs in the kitchen, the kitchen will just be on fire and full of yelling. The roster was reminiscent of the SKT that won back-to-back -back worlds. Strong depth with carry potential in multiple lanes in the event that enemies focused on shutting Faker down. And in the event that Faker wasn't shut down, well, he was still Faker. And that's the one for one trade now for ID. The flight from Faker is insane! The Azir gets the free hit and IG are separated. Torn, Faker can't get through but lives through the sustain over the wall. It's Jackie 2! Korea builds it and Faker builds the whole damn play. It's another fight in the top side. Faker gonna go 1v3 at this point as he still has his ultimate. Takes out two. And we'll be going here on to on fleek. Nice knock up, but still, this is an echo. And you know the party never ends if you're an echo player. As another kill comes down, and SKT with the Baron will push. And it hits. They don't have kick here, though. Oh, but that is going to land, though, as the flash away from Faker. But does on fleek have enough damage? No! The one last turret shot is going to kill him! But while the team did well in spring, there was another team that seemed poised to take the Korean crown, Griffin. They were a new wave of stars, including their hotshot mid laner Chovy, whose breakout performance that year built incredible hype around the team. And it was Griffin who were waiting for SKT at the end of the playoff bracket in both splits too. Spring often does this to us gentlemen, we often get the quick ones in the early stages of the year, but this is one that I don't think anyone expected. SKT 3-0! over Griffin after their incredible first round Robin. And what a way to end the game. SKT get a sweet Griffin here into the dumpster and they are going to do it. SKT will sweep in the playoffs and take down every single team in their path. They are the most dominant team from the Korean region. It's hard to feel bad when you win playoffs in both splits and earn top seeding for your region at Worlds, but even from atop the standings, SKT in 2019 must have felt there was a younger, hungrier generation of players waiting to break through behind them. While people look at SKT and you know remember of Ghosts of Korea past, and in some way they are the last bastion of hope of the old generation of LCK players, we have Dumb on Gaming coming in, we have Griffin coming in, we have a lot of these newer young gun players who don't necessarily have that baggage of Korea's misfires in the past year and a half, two years. Still, Damwon and Griffin were both inexperienced internationally, bowing out in quarterfinals against EU and Chinese teams. It was now up to SKT to keep Korea's world's dream alive, but standing in their way was G2, Europe's greatest roster. Pop Blossom will only collect on one, and Wonder is still living. G2 are coming out on top of the fight for now, but a beautiful body slam will not be enough. They're in the pinch that is not where you want to be against Desire. And SKT have got nothing left in this game one. No flash, no heal, no ult. But once it has to back, back off, off. cooldown. If he lands, lands it, the Void Seeker try in. into the ult. They can turn this around. Teddy can turn this. Teddy can turn this. No, he gets taken out. And just like that, in an instant, the series is defined as G2 move to match point. Can he get it done? He can't. The Vladimir, they can't do it. This is it. The greatest team in the history of League of Legends taken down by the greatest team Europe has ever produced. FPX, get ready. G2 is heading to Paris. SKT1's loss at G2 was a defining moment for League of Legends. Korea was no longer on top now, with China solidifying their place as the strongest region. And so, SK Telecom T1, now rebranded as T1, went back to the drawing board. Compared to 2019, it was an almost complete breakdown. 
Faker, Teddy and Effort stayed, but 2020 saw massive changes to the T1 lineup. It was a move towards cultivating young talent around the newly re-signed Faker now in his seventh year with T1. And those young, talented players absolutely rose to the occasion. Bullet Bear dies and that is going to do it. T1 are your LCK Spring 2020 champions. Now with a ninth domestic title in the trophy case, Faker and his new crew look to repeat in summer, but he couldn't make that happen. He's going to be absolutely fine. The second and last Nexus turret is taken down. Mystic flashes on forward. Death Defy is not enough. And Afrika are going to perform the miracle. They'll knock T1 out in the wild card. There was a lot on his mind. He was supposed to be helping to develop these players while also being the superstar who won three world titles. And so, at the end of July, T1 began benching Faker in favor of his mid lane substitute, Closer. In fact, Faker played only a single game for the remainder of the season. Closer was doing a great job, and according to T1's coach Kim, he and Faker were on essentially the same level at the time, but things were much clearer and calmer with Faker on the sideline. And even though Closer was doing well, some fans weren't happy about Faker being benched. T1 CEO Joe Marsh even had to post a statement about threats that the organization had received. But if some fans were upset with the arrangement, more were about to join them. Their lackluster finish in summer playoffs meant a trip to the regional gauntlet, and even though Faker did play, it wasn't enough to get back to Worlds. Chipping comes in and Gumiusi is in the front line for no reason, goes down, not able to stand up to the power that is Genji. Really nice combo, Shockwave coming in, but it doesn't look like it's gonna matter. They get pulled in and Genji will be making it to the World Championship of 2020 with the 3-0 sweep over T1. Now the question was simply how SKT would approach the future in 2021. 벌써 T1에서 아홉 번째 해인데 굉장히 시간이 빨리 갔다고 생각이 들고 확실히 오랜 시간이 지나고 나니까 많이 변했죠. 네, 많이 변한 부분이 스스로도 느껴지고 더 발전하고 있다는 것을 좀 느끼고 있습니다. Adding support carrier from Dragon X was an important step, but T1's development team hadn't been idle either, with bot laner Gumiyushi and jungler Ono joining the main roster after spending time as trainees, though they both had to compete for a starting spot. After a mediocre spring, the roster made it all the way to the summer finals, where they lost to Damwon. By this point, Ono and Gumiyushi had emerged as the clear starters in their roles, and with everyone playing beside him at least four years younger, Faker help them find the path to worlds. See what he can do. Trying to clear the wave. He has the Gore Drinker and he will stay alive. And we got respawns coming in here, but Vista just dies. The call is to just take down the Nexus and it looks like T1 will in fact secure the third place seed from the LCK. T1 was back at Worlds. Faker was back at Worlds. The group stage showed that T1 was for real. They split their two games against China's first seed, EDG, and swept the other teams. Suddenly, it seemed like anything could happen, and after blowing out Korean fourth seed Hanwha Life Esports, T1 needed to defeat Damwon to advance, the only team with a perfect group stage and defending world champions. When the two teams faced off, fans got one of the best five game series in world's history. Ulti coming from that doesn't do anything in the face of the Zin Zhao ultimate, and now Kana leaping in. He smells blood in the water. That's the double kill. That will be match point for T1 against Da Wan Kia. So much damage on carry on T1. They fought well to bring us to match point, but they'll get knocked down in game four. T1 holding on for as long as they can, but they know this one is over. And Don Juan Kia will bring us to game five. When it matters most, you will find this fight. Magumi Yushi standing strong on the backside. It does not matter. In the face of the elder, Don Juan Kia will wipe T1 off the map. They're going to TP top as well. They have the Elder Dragon. They have a wave. They have everything they need to go to the World Finals. And damn old legends and old legacies. Goodbye, Faker. Goodbye, T1. Hello, Don Juan and Showmaker. They will defend their title in the finals and look to go back to back. Sure, it wasn't another championship, but this team had nearly zero international experience besides, of course, Faker. They had so much room to grow.
and it wouldn't take long to see them assume their ultimate forms. Academy top laner Zeus was promoted to the starting roster, but otherwise the 2021 offseason was the quietest in T1's recent history. They already had the pieces, they just needed time. Over the course of the 2022 LCK Spring Split, T1 achieved something that seemed unlikely to ever happen in this highly competitive league, a perfect 18-0 match record during the regular season. Now Nexus Turrets will go down T1, an absolutely historical moment, 18-0 for the first time in the LCK and they tie. 2015 Summer SKT and Darm 1 2020 Summer, two teams that then went on to win Worlds at plus 29 points in the season. And they dominated the playoffs as well, taking out second place Gen G in four games. Owner will be able to pick it up and that is going to be the end of this. T1 are your spring 2022 victors here at Kintex once again for the 10th win of this organization. Faker had played with many different teammates since he held his head in his hands in 2017. He had missed Worlds twice. He had struggled to get T1 back to where his fans expected. But now, along with his team, he had finally succeeded. T1 haven't won Worlds yet, but for the first time in a long time, that seems possible. The young roster is developing alongside the single greatest player in league history and they all wear the uniform of the game's most successful org. Building something that stands the test of time is the very definition of a dynasty. Doing it a second time would be unprecedented, but if T1 pulls it off, we'll be glued to the screen. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring the notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit us up on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.